No, I never had the slightest idea. I wasn't looking to become some sort of icon. I just wanted to shoot things that I wanted to shoot. Either to sell or, you know, uh, well, I, it all boils down to business and selling. I didn't just shoot them to hang up anywhere, but I don't keep a lot of photos around me like I have seen other photographers do. Everybody at this book fair is trying to get in a few words with you. So I really have to press you and, and, and ask you, are you really uh, for, for real? Is, it, is, this, is this something that happened and that fell and that you one day realized that people were really trying to emulate you? No, I didn't know anybody was trying to imitate me at all. I was afraid in the beginning because I didn't have much confidence, I guess, that there would be other women that would try to copy me immediately and then they, somebody would be stronger than me and then I'd have to fight for my position. I, I, that thought went through my mind, but that never happened. If, if there are any women, I heard is, there is a couple that are doing photography in other places other than Miami, but as far as I know, there's nobody here and I haven't read about anybody else much except for a few people that told me, oh, so-and-so is doing the same thing that you started out doing. So I don't know if they copied my idea and they thought I'd like to do that too, or they wanted to, you know, beat me at my game and do something better than I do. <laughs> and I thought, well, I don't care. I just don't care because if I start thinking about what somebody else might be trying to do to my career, I'll lose all sense of reality. And I have to think in a straight line to who I am and who I want to stay and be. So I'm happy with myself. In your book, there's a statement that comes from you where you confirm that it would be a very boring place if all women would look alike. At least that's what the world would be. Yes. Our maker was very clever about this because sometimes that's the little tweak we see in another person and fall in love with, perhaps. The thing that's wrong with them. I think that your way of looking at women and seeing how it is appreciated, there are long lines of people waiting to buy your book, um, is really touching. It means that we've made progress and we're accepting that, uh, that we are beautiful, maybe, that we don't need other validation than just being, being individuals. And that's an expensive book. I remember when books were a lot cheaper. <laughs> they didn't it didn't cost as much. It also has a, a relationship with, with this city and more than a relationship, it has a, a link to a period of time when there were certain barriers that were apparently accidentally broken by you. Yes, I guess so, but those things weren't bothering me then, you know. They might have bothered other people, but they weren't bothering me like some of the things with, that I did with Sammy Davis Jr. You know, somebody else might not want to be associated with someone like that but I found him very fascinating and he he was learning how to take pictures and he had bought a lot of expensive equipment and uh, I, I thought wow I wish I could afford all that I probably could have but I don't want a big deal about a camera it's me that's making the picture that camera is only as good as I am and so I, I never invested in a camera just because it had a name. We understand that for your models you started making bathing suits? I was making bathing suits when I first started modeling myself because it was very hard to buy suits to fit a tall girl like 5'10 like I am. So I found with the suits that were in style, the one-piece suits like Janssen and the different uh, big manufacturers, they made their suits I guess with a shorter model because when I put a one-piece suit on it just kept riding down to, to showing my nipples you know and something looked wrong and I was always trying to pull it up pull it up and I thought I don't like this so I started buying two-piece suits they made two-piece suits but they were up to the waistline and the top weren't really very brief so then it was easier for me to make suits Say there was a good-looking model in town. Well, all the photographers like me that were shooting for magazines, 
they would be f photographing the same girl, which she'll bring in the same suits. She'll be posing. I'm competing with that. A girl posing in the same suit, maybe the same background, you know, beach and sun and all that. So I thought, how can I make my picture stand out? All of these uh, editors are usually in New York, so they don't know the truth about anybody. And I, I just try to make my things look different from any other photographer's work. And how could I do it? By making a different suit for each girl. So they all had their own suits. You know, I made, I didn't give it to them, but I made these suits just for my, my pictures. What was it about Miami that inspired you to shoot the, the models as you did? And obviously it's a very distinctive style. I was starting out with no photo studio. I was not a professional photographer. I had gone to photography school and I, I didn't really want to open a photo studio. I didn't want to get backing and start a business. And I, I just wanted to do it when I felt like it. So I, I had to work under those circumstances more than somebody that was going to study to be a, a lifetime photographer. I was not a lifetime photographer. I was doing it for this part of my life that I wanted to do. You know, I don't know that I would go on this long. I had no idea. <laughs> so I wasn't prepared for that. But I, I was prepared that I didn't destroy any of my negatives because as I look back on them now, of my old negatives, they're in good condition and I know I'm I'm selling some of them, but I'm getting a lot more money than I did when I first issued them. Well, that's a good thing. Isn't it? It's a very good thing, and I don't know how I'm getting away with it, but it's, you know, people want to keep charging more and more for my photography. And I'm thinking, gee, I had these photo photographs for years in my files, and I was doing nothing, nobody was buying anything. All the men's magazines that I had been selling to went out of business. They were put out of business, business by magazines like Penthouse and other magazines that uh, published explicit nudes. And those magazines turned me off. They, they just, to me, they looked pornographic. And I, I didn't, I've never submitted pictures to anybody like that. So it was for you more about aesthetics than, than pornography or soft pornography for the sake of it. I wasn't interested in pretending about this or that, but I knew that I wanted to shoot clean, wholesome pictures, ones that I wouldn't have to be ashamed of showing anyone, and even if they were nude, they would be clean looking. And the pictures that I saw in magazines like Penthouse, I, I hated things like that. They were too uh, exploitable, you know? We fully understand, and I guess that's why today there is there is such recognition of your work. But I have something that I would like to ask you: those self-portraits of yours, they 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 are magnificent. How did the idea first come? How did you start shooting yourself? Oh, I love my self-portraits. <laughs> I I don't know how I ever did it, but uh, I wanted to take pictures of myself, and sometimes. I didn't know who to go to to get pictures. I, as a model, I had picked out several photographers to work with, but they were expensive. They didn't show me anything that I didn't know. So I gained nothing except to buy photographs from somebody I didn't care for. And they were earning livings doing that and shooting models, but they weren't pictures that I wanted and I wanted to take my picture. So I started to get the idea of my book, how I photograph myself, because I thought if I do a book showing how I can photograph myself and what I'm aiming for and what I've been lacking in finding in other photographers, I'm replacing with my talent. And it seems kind of stingy to be trying to do all things, but when I shot pictures of myself, I knew how much of me I wanted to show. I wasn't worried about this or that, and if something wasn't good, I could always destroy it. But I, I don't remember 
cutting up any of my photos, any of my negatives. I, so I think I probably covered that pretty good. You shot Betty Page. We'd like to know, what was the shoot like? Uh, she, she came uh, with her own suits, you know, but they were one-piece suits. But when I learned that she would pose nude without a problem, she didn't have to be coaxed into it or prodded with money, like, I'll pay you this if you'll do this. She just loved to pose. So I thought, I better shoot this girl in the nude while I have, because I don't know of another girl that would pose for me like that. And I got some very beautiful shadowy poses of her in my studio that I was working in at that time. I had never been around anyone that was so unconcerned about nudity. And I, I knew she probably would pose nude, but she took a long time to get ready. I was always fast. I didn't want to keep photographers waiting. I was a good model because I didn't hold them up. Betty was the slowest girl. She would come in, she would undress a little bit, and then she would start putting her makeup on. Then she would put cream on her legs or whatever she put on them, you know, made her look good, had a little sheen to it. And she was doing all these things. And when she finally came out, I was worn out just waiting for her, and I didn't care what she was doing. I just wanted to get the pictures over with. I wasn't looking forward to shooting her or anything. And she turned out to be a really great, great model. There are pictures of Betty even, for example, on incredible beaches. I mean, you have shown uh, South Florida in its most beautiful sights. Well, I learned that there were pictures in the newspaper almost every day from, I think it was International News Press and Associated Press, these different organizations. They photographed a lot of girls. Almost every day there would be a pinup girl in the newspaper. She wasn't anybody. She, they wrote something cute, you know, under the ca and made a nice caption. But she wasn't a star. She wasn't even a mo model. She was just somebody that looked nice, some photographer took somewhere. And I, I tried to find out how they did it, how these girls got their picture in the paper so often. And I made a good connection with the city of Miami Beach. I called them because their, Miami Beach was the, the line, the credit line, almost all the pictures. They were doing it for publicity. And I found out they had a couple of photographers that did nothing but shoot publicity pictures. And I said, well, uh, how does that work? And they said, well, are, are you a model? Do you want to pose? I said, of course I want to pose. I want to get my picture in the paper. I'd like to do that. I see all these other girls getting in, and I don't know how to do it. So I started working with one photographer, and I did everything he told me to do. And then I, I met another photographer working for them, and he was, he was even better yet, because he helped me develop my first bikini. I had designed a diaper-type bathing suit which was tied on each side and I took a bra, a real strapless bra, and I covered it over with the same kind of material which made a, a beautiful top, you know, it was perfect. But the bottom was like a diaper tied on each side and he says, you know, that that suit has too much material in it. You, 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 it, it looks bulky, it doesn't look nice on you. He said, try untying the two ties and try uh, tie, rolling the suit down from the, the waistline. Roll, it, roll the material down and cover it up and make it as little as you can and then tie it on the side with a knot or a bow. And that was my first bikini that I actually designed because a photographer complained about me wearing too much clothes but it was the luckiest thing that happened because I invented the bikini that way. So it's so nice to hear your, your stories, especially in, in this very simple fashion. The way you tell it is, is absolutely humbling. Um, you, you deserve all the recognition you're, you're getting and even more uh, from the point of view of an artist, it's obvious, but from a human being point of view, let me say it, it was most enjoyable speaking with you today. Thank you. Uh, I, I can't believe 
that this is all happening. <laughs> <laughs>